Hey, welcome to this week's study guide. We're in the second week of our book of Daniel, and we are in chapter 2. And things are getting certainly interesting as we are moving our way through them. So I've got just a few questions for you guys to be able to discuss amongst yourself or to do in your own personal study. Again, we're in chapter two, and the title is Putting Things in Place. And that's exactly what this passage talks about God doing. And so here we go. Question number one. Think of a time when you were faced, like Daniel, with an impossible situation or circumstance. What did you do? And how did you respond? We see Daniel went to the Lord. He went to his friends and said, it's time for us to pray. And he trusted that the Lord could get him out of what would have been certain death. Few of us have faced anything that serious, but there is a great lesson there of where we turn. We go to God. We pray. We seek the counsel of our friends. We ask our friends to pray for us, knowing that God is able to take care of anything that concerns us. Question number two, why do you think Nebuchadnezzar asked someone to tell him his dream instead of telling them the dream first? What was he afraid of by telling them his dream? And listen, this is very important. How did the wise men response prove that they were frauds? How did the wise men's response prove that they were frauds? I think all along Nebuchadnezzar must have had suspicion that these guys were frauds. And he thought, if I tell them, they'll just make something up and then they'll stand by it. And by the time it would have come to pass, I would be dead or they would be dead. Instead, he wanted to force their hand. And they said, nobody can do this. Nobody's ever done this. And thus, they were proving that they didn't have the power. They were fakers. And so they might have been convinced that their answers were coming from their gods, but they were not. And so when Nebuchadnezzar forced them to tell them the dream, there was only one person who could do it, and that one person was Daniel. And the only reason Daniel could do it is because there is a God who gives dreams and who interprets dreams. And we know that he proved that he is God. Nebuchadnezzar says, Surely your God is the God of gods, the Lord of dreams. And that's so true. Question number three. Why is it so important for us as Christians to seek out Jesus in those times that seem impossible? Why is it so important for us to seek out Jesus in those difficult, impossible times? Well, as we mentioned earlier, and I hope that you've discussed, Jesus is the only one who can tell us and help us. He's the only one who knows the secrets of the universe. He's the one by whom, through whom, for whom, all things were made that were made. There's nothing beyond his reach. And so why wouldn't we go there? That's the best place and the only real place that we should go in those difficult times. Let's go on to question number four. How does our God use our situations and circumstances that seem impossible for both his glory and our good? Good question. We find several times in scripture where God getting us through difficult times brings him glory, but also strengthens our faith and builds our, builds our faith. And so we see here that God was building Daniel's faith. He was proving to Nebuchadnezzar and to all of Babylon that he's God and proving to us even today as we sit here a thousand years, two thousand years, two thousand five hundred years later, we're continued, we're continued to be strengthened knowing that God is God and that he's able to accomplish all that concerns us. We go on to question number five. Notice that Daniel points back to God who gave him his wisdom and discernment. What are ways that you are right now showing others in your life that God is the source of your wisdom, joy, peace, and and what you currently have? This is important. This is your witness. This is your testimony. No wonder people don't come to faith in Christ. We don't tell them what he's done in our lives. Think about all the blessings that you have. Think about all the things that God's gotten you through. Think about the joy of being part of a church, of having Christian relationships, of his words speaking to you, of his spirit comforting you, of having a peace that passes understanding, of having a hope that the world doesn't have. Think about all those things and don't just hold them in. Tell people they want to know. Nothing's more powerful than a good testimonial. Think about it. When somebody tells you about how awesome a particular restaurant is, you want to go. You want to check it out. Think about people who need to check out the goodness of God. And you, you can can reveal that through your testimony. 
Let's go to the last question. Question number six. How does the interpretation of the vision give you hope and wisdom for the future? Daniel interpreted the vision, and in that interpretation, do you find hope? Well, we see here that there's a statue that was as the figure of a man. We're reminded in this that men will fail. No matter how beautiful, gold, silver, bronze, no matter how strong, iron, we know that men's kingdoms will fail. God is the author of all history. He holds all history, past, present, and future, in His hands. And He is the one that will make it all come to pass. And we know that all things work together for those who love God and are called according to His purpose. And so when we see that He holds the future, we know that He can hold us if we trust in Him. I pray that in the interpretation of this dream, that man's kingdoms will fail, but God's kingdom is everlasting. I pray that you'll put your trust and faith in God and that you will have that encouragement and that strength that comes from knowing that He holds the future. God bless. Thanks for joining me today for Study Guide Week 2 of Daniel.